From a well-decorated commando all the way to the abomination, Emil Blonsky's history is quite complex. Despite him being in prison for more than 15 years, however, the reformed Emil Blonsky could have a say in the things to come, which is why I'm here today to see where the character stands right now within the MCU and give you a first look into things. Enjoy! First appearing in Tales to Astonish in 1967, Emil Blonsky or Abomination was created by Stan Lee and Gil Kane, where he was a Yugoslavian spy who infiltrated Bruce Banner's lab where he was conducting his gamma radiation experiments. It's also the place where Emil Blonsky uses the gamma machine to expose himself to radiation, and luckily for him, he gets a similar genetic makeup to synthesize the gamma radiation. This exposure is also what led him transform into a green monster, which Betty Ross called the Abomination. In the comics, the character was not able to return to his human form, but retained his intelligence much like Professor Hulk and the latest She-Hulk in the MCU. In the MCU, on the other hand, Emil Blonsky's origin story is quite different, with him being a Russian spy and British-raised Royal Marines commando, and it was a corrupted version of Captain America's soldier serum that made him become Abomination. The light at the end of the tunnel for MCU's Emil Blonsky is the fact that he's able to transform into his human form or the other way around wherever he likes, something we learned in the latest She-Hulk series, but more on that a little bit later. Being some sort of a knockoff, a variation of a Hulk, the Abomination has similar powers to him, super strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, as well as the healing factor among other things. Outside of the powers and the transformation Emil goes every time, much like the Hulk, the two are not even remotely close in similarities when it comes to the public. Because while Smart Hulk was praised as the hero that saved the world after restoring half the universe with a snap, Abomination was locked away. So if you're taking another crack at him, I want in. And with respect, you should be looking for a team that's prepped and ready to fight. The character is the first one to jump over to the MCU after Hulk, because as you might recall the 2008's The Incredible Hulk was never within the MCU. Thus, the Abomination has surely been kept for something big, right? Or at least that's how the notion at Marvel Studios goes. If you're still within the MCU, or coming back to it after a long period of time, then you're in for a treat as something big awaits for you, which seems to be the case for yet another character from 2008's Hulk movie. Tim Blake Nelson's character, Samuel Stearns, who got a drop or two from Hulk's blood right into his head wound, which is the origin story of the character from the Marvel comics known as the Leader, a character that Marvel is bringing into the MCU, with him possibly being the founder of one of the strongest team-ups in Marvel history, the Intelligentsia, an organization filled with powerful minds that have genius intellect within them. But enough of that, I'm here for Abomination alone, a character who I think will have a lot to say in the upcoming events of the MCU, especially since an alternate Abomination plan from the past comes crawling back to the MCU. But before I do that, make sure to hit the like button if you haven't done it so already. And with that out of the way, let's continue. And I almost forgot, as a side note, there will be spoilers up ahead from the latest She-Hulk series, Beware, and if you haven't watched the series yet, make sure to do so as soon as possible as it's one of the best TV shows of 2022. And without further ado, let's dive right in. As I said before, Emil Blonsky's abomination made the jump to the MCU when he was seen fighting Wong in an illegal tournament in Macau. Over the course of the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie, and the latest sighting of him came through the currently airing She-Hulk series, with the series itself, among other things, is probably setting up Emil Blonsky up for a redemption arc. He has made peace with his victims including Bruce Banner and is ready to rejoin society after so many years in custody. First in a prison made by S.H.I.E.L.D. and after the collapse of the agency in 2014, transported in the custody of the Department of Damage Control as we came to learn. Not everyone is as sure as Jennifer Walters that if he gets released, he'll not go back to his old ways. The fans are suggesting that his release will probably add him to the Thunderbolts team that is coming to the MCU, a connection that he already has in the Marvel comics and a place where he can start to make his own legacy within the wider MCU. Much like many other characters so far, his return for the role in the She-Hulk series was not smooth either, or at least that's what Tim Roth thought when Marvel approached him for the role. According to him, was an offer that you could not refuse. Roth described the experience as a difficult one at first, only before Mark Ruffalo came to shoot a scene where Tim was and say how things were done in today's world. As of now, the rumored Doctor Doom and Kang the Conqueror are the main villains of the MCU. However, Marvel seems to have an edge in these things as the studio is making sure that they do more than enough for the smaller villains as well. 
integrating them whenever and wherever they can, involving them in more properties, the same way some lesser-known heroes make appearances in various crossovers, which seems to be the plan for Abomination and his future within the MCU. Taking into consideration his two appearances, recently in the previously mentioned both in the first Shang-Chi movie and the She-Hulk series, Marvel Studios might have bigger plans for the character than fans realize. In the MCU timeline, it has been more than 15 years since Abomination was last seen in Phase 1, that is, if you include the Incredible Hulk movie in the mix, after which he shifted prisons, from the cryo prison, the vault, all the way to the raft, a change that has probably occurred within the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D. Something that has not been confirmed by Marvel yet, but it seems to be the case. And as the S.H.I.E.L.D. series progresses and Emil Blonsky's presence even bigger than before, it looks like the Abomination is ready to smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. But no, the thing I wanted to say is that him crossing paths with Jennifer Walters could mean that he'll play a significant role in the finale of the first season, and for him to continue having a crucial role in the events to come. Now this doesn't mean that there's a standalone movie or a series for the character, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't be one in the future, right? It would be an understatement to say that I'm excited about Abomination's future in the MCU, not only because of how important his character could potentially become, but also because of the original plans that saw him get introduced in the Avengers Age of Ultron movie are finally coming to fruition. Mainly due to Hulk's complicated film rights, this wasn't possible a few years ago, but in today's world, there's nothing except Marvel Studios that stands in Emil Blonsky's way to become the very well-known character from the Marvel comics into the live-action MCU. Whether Abomination will appear in further Marvel projects or not remains a mystery, but there are some questions about how Wong interacts with the hulking monster, something that made me think, is Wong actually Emil Blonsky's therapist in some way, the one that actually reformed him to become a better person, or is everything just an act from Emil's side? The two have made some kind of camaraderie rather than being enemies. Thus, following from Phase 1 and the plan for the Abomination to be brought back as an Avenger could hint that there's a high chance of him possibly becoming part of the next iteration of the Earth's Mightiest Heroes in the near future. Or on the other hand, for him to get recruited by Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine to join the newest team on the horizon at MCU, the Thunderbolts, either way, all I wanted to say is the fact that Abomination is on the verge of a major comeback after sitting out both Phase 2 and Phase 3 of the MCU. See you in the next video.